Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Ben or Benny in the Jits if you follow me on Twitter or you've seen me in Discord. And in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up your MetaMask hot wallet so you can begin trading cryptocurrency and actually own your cryptocurrency. I'm going to walk you step by step how to set up the wallet, how to fund it, how to do everything correctly so that you don't get scammed, you don't lose your crypto. And I'm also going to show you a few tips and tricks and extra settings that I add in that are going to be really helpful for you to use in the future as you use and learn more about using MetaMask. Now this is the first video in a multi-part video series, a Crypto 101 video series that I'm creating to help get people that are brand new to crypto onboarded, help people understand what crypto is, how it works, and give you the ability and confidence to interact with crypto, to buy, sell, and trade crypto and NFTs and understand what you're doing so you don't get scammed, you don't lose your funds, and you do everything safely. I know when I started, I was super, super nervous about every transaction I made because I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really understand how everything worked. So this video series that I'm creating is essentially the tutorial that I wish I had when I got started. So without further ado, let's get your MetaMask hot wallet set up and let's fund it with some Ethereum so you can begin making your own transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. So the first step to getting this set up is simply to go to metamask.io. This is the official MetaMask website. And I wanna stress this before I get into anything, always, always, always double check, triple check, quadruple check your links in crypto. Scammers are everywhere in the cryptocurrency space. And if you click on and interact with bad links, you could easily lose a lot of money. So with that said, once you're at the correct website, which I will link in the description, go ahead and download the extension. I'm using Chrome, so I'm gonna install MetaMask for Chrome. Add to Chrome, add extension. All right, so MetaMask is downloaded, and now I'm gonna move on to the next step. So this section here is where you decide if you wanna create a brand new untouched wallet, or if you wanna import a wallet that you already own. Since this tutorial is for creating a new wallet, I'm gonna go ahead and click here. But if you did wanna import an existing wallet, all you would do is click the import wallet button, and it would prompt you to enter your seed phrase. If you don't know what a seed phrase is, don't worry about it, I'll explain it in the next step. All right, so now that we're on the next page, just agree to all of their conditions, I agree. And here you're gonna create your password. So I'm just gonna create one quickly. There we go, you have read and agreed to the terms of use, create. So on this page, they just have a quick video explanation of what your seed recovery phrase is. I do recommend watching the video, it's a lot of good information in there, it'll give you a better understanding. But essentially, what your seed phrase is is it is a 12 word phrase that is the master key to your wallet and your funds. So if you think of your MetaMask wallet like a bank account, your seed recovery phrase would be like your login credentials to get in and access your bank account. If anyone knows your password and your login info, they can use, send, or steal your funds at will. But the difference between a seed phrase and your bank account is that if somebody gets into your bank account and steals your funds, the bank has so much money that they will probably just reimburse you. It might take a while, but you will most likely get your money back. If someone finds your 12 word seed phrase and takes your money, there is no way you are ever getting that back. It is permanent. So just be super, super careful and never share it with anybody. So that said, let's go on to the next step. And here it's actually going to show me what my seed phrase is. This is like a one-time thing where I click this button here and it shows me the 12 words that make up my seed recovery phrase. Remember, it's like my login credentials for my bank and I'm gonna write them down. Never ever screenshot this, put it in a email draft or anything like that. Never put it in your files, in your computer. Look at this once, take an old fashioned sheet of paper, write down these words and make two to three copies and store them in different locations and never share their whereabouts with anybody. All it takes is one click on a bad link or some small security flaw in your PC or email server. And if you have your seed phrase stored digitally, either in an image or some text file somewhere, a scammer can get access to your seed phrase, which in turn gives them access to all of your cryptocurrency and all of your hard work could be for absolutely, absolutely nothing. I'm not joking, people have lost millions and millions of dollars because they didn't keep their seed phrase secure and they did not follow these steps and I don't want you to become one of them. So with that said, write down your seed phrase and we'll move on to the next step. So in this step here, you're just gonna have to click the words in your seed phrase in the correct order. They're just confirming that you've done everything correctly. So I'm just gonna do that now. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit confirm and there we go. So now you've successfully created your MetaMask wallet. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do just so you have easy access is go up to the right hand corner here if you're using Chrome, hit that puzzle and just pin MetaMask up to the top here just so you can always grab it whenever you need to. The second thing you're gonna wanna do is name your account. 
So I'm just gonna click here, these three dots, account details and account one, I'm going to change that to demo, go Ben's demo account. Boom, there we go. Check that and now you can see the name has changed. The next two things I'd recommend doing are setting up your advanced gas controls and showing your customizable nouns. Now these are more advanced features of MetaMask. I use the gas controls to speed up or slow down my transactions and I use the customizable nouns to actually cancel transactions quickly without paying a high gas fee. I'm not gonna get into explaining either of those two things in this video, but I would recommend setting this up now so you get used to and accustomed to the different interface that it will display when you have these settings turned on. So in order to turn these two settings on, I'm just gonna hit this button up here and I'm going to go to settings and then advanced on the left and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna turn on advanced gas controls as well as customized transaction nouns. There we go. And there's no save button here, so it should just automatically save once you've done that. Let me double check. And yes, it's saved correctly. Perfect. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention is that typically MetaMask will show up in a much smaller window. So for example, if you just accidentally say close that window there, all you have to do is click your MetaMask icon in the top right that you've pinned and you will get all of the same options that I was just looking at there just on a smaller screen. And this is actually how you would normally interact with MetaMask. Now, one final thing I want to go over before we actually fund this wallet with Ethereum, which will actually show up right here uh, once it arrives is your public address. So if I click this button here, you can see it says copy to clipboard. If I click that, it will copy it to my computer clipboard and I can paste it wherever I want. So paste this long string of random looking characters. What this is, if you liken it back to the bank account example, where your seed phrase is your login credentials, you can think of this address right here as an email address. So when you send an e-transfer with your regular bank account and you send it to someone's email address, that's what you put in when you send cash to them. That's essentially what this is. So when somebody goes to send you money, they're going to need this exact address right here. This is like your email address for your MetaMask wallet, which is why it's called your wallet address. And this is what people will need to have if they want to send crypto to your wallet. Again, just like a regular e-transfer. So this address is not something you need to keep private at all. It's not a big deal if somebody knows what your wallet address is. It's not like the seed phrase where they can take anything from your wallet is completely, completely secure. The only real downside for people knowing what your wallet address is, is that then they can just look into your wallet and actually see what you own and how much money you have in there. Because unlike typical bank accounts, that's not hidden. People's wallets are on the blockchain. They are public for everybody to see. So once somebody does know your address, they will know exactly how much money and what types of cryptocurrency or NFTs you are storing in your wallet. So that's the only thing to be aware of. And one final thing that I forgot to mention, since we are still on the topic of MetaMask wallet creation, if you do want to set up the same MetaMask wallet on your phone, simply click the icon at the top right, hit settings, advanced, sync with mobile. And normally there's actually a QR code that you can scan with your phone here once you've of course downloaded the app from the google play store or the apple app store normally you can just scan it in right here it looks like uh, that's temporarily disabled so you'll just have to go into your app follow the instructions here and likely enter your seed phrase that we touched on before and then everything will get synced up with your phone one thing to note is that the name of your account that we edited before here as well as tokens which we will be importing down here i'm not going to touch on how to import individual tokens uh, into your metamask wallet in this video but in the future i will go over that just know that both the name as well as those tokens which you import will not appear in your metamask wallet you'll have to change them manually it's just an aesthetics thing um, for the name primarily the tokens it's just nice to have them in there so you can see them if you don't know what i'm talking about don't worry um, but just know that like if you pull up your MetaMask wallet and not everything is exactly the same as what you see on your computer, it's likely because you haven't changed the name of your account, uh, which doesn't really matter, or you haven't imported the tokens. So the tokens are still in your wallet. You just can't see them. But that's really it for the initial MetaMask wallet setup. Once you've gone through it once, it becomes pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive to do once you kind of see how it works. And now I'm actually going to go into how you can actually fund your wallet with Ethereum and get your money from US dollars turn them into Ethereum and send them to this wallet so you can begin making cryptocurrency transactions, buying NFTs, etc., etc. So there's really three different ways that you can actually fund your MetaMask wallet. And the only real difference between these three methods is the amount of time that it will take to process your transactions, as well as the processing slash transaction fees that you will pay to actually get your US dollars convert them into ETH and then send them to this wallet. So the first way is to actually go into your MetaMask wallet itself and just hit this buy button right here. 
So they give you two real options to actually purchase crypto within MetaMask. And the first is with Wire. Um, this is basically the easiest way to buy crypto, except your fees are going to be a bit higher. Um, so you just type in the amount of crypto that you want to buy here. Let's say you want to buy a thousand dollars worth. You would go down and you would authorize. And the next step is just going to be your standard is like buying something off of an e-commerce store. You just insert all your information and uh, phone number, email, yada, yada. You submit that and they'll ask for your debit card number and they will charge your bank account directly through your debit card. Or I believe you can use a credit card. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that is how you do that. It's pretty straightforward. It won't take too long. It'll be probably about five or so minutes before the money actually arrives in your MetaMask wallet. I've done it once or twice, uh, but that's not the method I prefer. The other option that MetaMask gives you is to go down here and hit buy again and go and send a wire transfer. So I imagine that the fees are lower with this than it would be for the debit card. I can't confirm that because I haven't actually done it. Um, again, I don't really buy too much within actual MetaMask, but that is another option right there as well if you want to figure that out. Now the third option, which I typically use, is to make an account on a third party website or app like Coinbase, uh, ShakePay, I think Uphold is one, and to send your US dollars to that app, convert your dollars into Ethereum on that app, and then send your Ethereum to your MetaMask wallet through that app. You can use exchanges as well, like Binance, Gemini, KuCoin, and I think your fees will actually be significantly lower if you wire your money in through one of those large exchanges, not just an app. Um, I haven't done that personally, but I would recommend investigating that if you are looking at moving a larger amount of money. But for now, I'm gonna demonstrate this using an app called ShakePay, uh, which I use personally. I believe it's only available in Canada, but it might be worldwide at this point. I'm not 100% sure on that, but the process is generally the same regardless of whether you're using ShakePay, um, Coinbase, uh, uphold, etc., etc. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through how to use it on this app, and then you'll be able to figure it out for yourself uh, using whichever app you decide to use and is best for you in your country. All right, so I've just pulled up my ShakePay right here. Uh, this is just a screencast to my device. Um, ShakePay currently only has a mobile version. Uh, you can't actually send crypto on desktop, so that's why I'm doing this. It's just a bit easier to record, but most apps will have a desktop version as well that you can complete this on. Um, but here you can see I've sent 230 Canadian dollars to my ShakePay account. The way this is done is just through e-transfer. Again, that is specific to the app. So that's something you'll have to figure out for yourself depending on which app you're using. So you can see I've got the 230 Canadian dollars in my account. So I'm just gonna go and click this button at the bottom here, buy and sell. And I'm gonna convert my dollars to Ethereum. Just gonna change this over. There we go, Ethereum maximum. So now I'm converting 230 Canadian dollars into 0.048 Ethereum uh, by Ethereum. And I already had a little bit of Ethereum in there before. Confirm. And I can see I just bought the Ethereum. And I'm gonna close that for now just so we can double check our balances. And there we go. I now have 0.0532 Ethereum, which is 248 Canadian dollars in my account. Now the next step, now that I have this on the app, is to send this Ethereum to my MetaMask wallet. And the way I'm gonna do that is by clicking on the Ethereum button. Again, this is gonna be different for whichever app you have, but the process overall will be similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and click send. And you can see here, it's actually already detected the address in my clipboard, uh, but if it wasn't already in my phone's clipboard, all I would have to do is again, go back here, click on my MetaMask, and then click this to copy it to clipboard. So I'm gonna go here and I'm going to select that. And then I'm gonna go maximum. Um, so I'm sending all of my Ethereum for my ShakePay to my MetaMask wallet. And one thing I always recommend doing before you send any transaction is to double check the first four and the last four digits in the Ethereum address that you're sending to. There are some scammers who, if they have compromised your computer, can have a program running in the background so that whenever you copy an Ethereum address, it swaps it out in the clipboard of your computer to their own Ethereum address. And if you don't double check this and you happen to have one of those viruses on your computer, you can end up sending your crypto to the scammer's address. It doesn't happen often, but it's something to be aware of and it's something worth getting in the habit of checking every time you send a transaction. So the first four here is 0x20 and the last four is 3536. I'm going to click on my MetaMask up here and just double check. 0x20, 3536. So we are good to go there. I'm gonna pop up my ShakePay again, hit continue. From there to there, double check again, 0x20, 3536, and confirm. Boom, there we go. 
All right, so it's been about five minutes and you can see that now the Ethereum has showed up in my MetaMask wallet. The values are a little bit different because this is priced in US dollars, whereas before it was Canadian dollars that I was using. One thing to note is that when you're using an app like ShakePay, Coinbase, or using an exchange like Binance, you don't actually own the crypto when you're holding it on that app. Essentially the exchange or app owns a bunch of that crypto. And when you buy crypto, they give you the rights to own that crypto, but you're not actually physically buying that crypto yourself. They're holding it for you. And sometimes this can result in delays when you're sending crypto between those apps and exchanges, because when you go to send your crypto, you're not actually interacting directly on the blockchain. You're simply requesting that the exchange send your crypto via the blockchain. And they can really do that whenever they see fit. Some of them decide to wait for when transaction fees are lower so your transactions don't go through immediately or as fast as you'd like. On the flip side, once your crypto is on MetaMask or a similar wallet, you actually own the crypto and every transaction you make is you initiating a transaction on the blockchain that you're using. And you will be in charge of the speed at which they execute and you won't have any of the issues that you might have when you use an exchange that takes its time to actually send your funds. It's not a big deal most of the time, but it's just something to be aware of. All right, so now that we've successfully funded our MetaMask wallet, we've turned our fiat dollars into Ethereum. I'm gonna show you how you can send this Ethereum to another address, just like you would an e-transfer in the regular banking world. So I actually have another wallet set up here on this separate browser. And so I'm gonna click on that and just copy that wallet address to my clipboard. Once that's copied, I'm gonna head over to my original MetaMask wallet. I'm going to uh, click send paste that address in and again always double check your addresses so i'm checking the first and last four digits of the address to confirm that it is correct and it is and i'm going to go ahead and send 0.01 ethereum to that address once that's set up there i'm going to hit next and you can see it's about 37 bucks and there's going to be a six dollar transaction fee now this transaction fee will vary depending on how heavily the network is being used the more people that are using the ethereum network at the time when you're trying to send a transaction, the higher your gas price, your transaction fee will be. Six bucks is pretty good right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to confirm that transaction. And you can see now it is listed in my activity queue as pending. All right, so it took about 30 seconds for that transaction to go through. You could see that in my original wallet here that the money has been deducted, the money has been sent, and over here, uh, the balance has gone from 0 0.2578 to 0 0.2678, which is about $37. So that is how you send cryptocurrency transactions to other people's wallets. Now, if you wanted to cash out and convert your crypto back into regular dollars, all you would have to do is the reverse of what we initially did to get our money into Ethereum in the first place. So all I'm going to do is find the address of my ShakePay app, my Ethereum address. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna click send in my wallet. I'm gonna paste that in there, confirm it, and then it will show up in my ShakePay as Ethereum. And then it's just the reverse, just transfer Ethereum into dollars on my ShakePay and then e-transfer it out of my ShakePay into my regular bank account. Again, each app will be slightly different, but that's the overall process you will need to follow to get your money out of crypto and back into fiat currency. So that about wraps up what I was hoping to cover in this video. Obviously, there's a lot more features in MetaMask that I have not talked about. I'm saving that for a future video where I'll go more in depth on the advanced features of this hot wallet. Um, one last thing I do wanna mention just regarding security is when you are not using MetaMask, I encourage you to just click this icon up here and lock your account. This prevents people on your computer from having access to your MetaMask. You saw how easy it was for me to transfer that crypto from this wallet to another wallet. So you don't wanna be giving people the opportunity to steal your funds either by remotely accessing your computer or literally just sitting down at your computer and sending your crypto to their address. You can see here as well, my password is not set to autofill. Sometimes that's an automatic feature that browsers have. That essentially negates the whole purpose of locking your MetaMask in the first place because people can still remotely access your computer, sit down, click on lock with the password autofilled and steal your funds. So just keep that in mind and make sure that that's disabled. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. In future videos, I will be going more in depth on advanced MetaMask features. I'll be talking about centralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges, how to switch your money between different layer ones, how to add layer ones to MetaMask, how to buy, sell, trade NFTs, all of that good stuff. So stay tuned if you want to see that and you're interested in learning more about how to get into cryptocurrency and how to do so safely. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and I will see you in the very next video.